perspective from our own uh, experts who we bring in. Joining us tonight on the program, Assistant Chief Jailer and former Chief of the Major Crime Section, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee served as a police officer for 30 years. He oversaw homicide cases, robberies, special victims units, and a gun assault team. He's also a former uh, Assistant Police Academy Director. Also with us, retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Sergeant Dorsey started with the LAPD in 1980. She worked in patrol specialized units, including gangs. And is she, she's also the author of Black and Blue, The Creation of a Social Advocate. Sergeant, Lieutenant Colonel, great to have you both here tonight. And uh, this first one, wow. Uh, so this first video comes from the Brevard County Sheriff's Office down in Brevard County, Florida. And... Um, there's about 20 million views on this thing already, and it, and it just happened. Uh, the sheriff here calling out a nuisance house. Hello, everyone. I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. And this afternoon, I'm standing in front of a house at 4295 Delaspine Road in Port St. John that has become a complete nuisance to its neighborhood and our agency. Our agency has now responded to almost 100 calls for service at this address in the past 12 months. Now, the calls to this house have been for drugs, drug overdose, where Narcan had to be deployed, fights, stolen vehicles, needles thrown over the fence in the neighbor's yard, disturbances, and so on. In fact, 31 disturbances that we have had to respond to. In addition, our team has made multiple arrests at this address, as well as arrests of various subjects that were leaving the residence and so forth. In fact, just yesterday, we arrested two scumbags who had just left this house who were both violent felons, one of which had actually broken into a house through a doggy door where a 10-year-old was sitting in the house playing. The people at this house are dealing in drugs, using drugs, abusing drugs, and stealing other people's stuff to finance their crimes, and it needs to stop. Enough is enough. You and your house have now officially made my hit list, high-intensity target. That's right. You inside the house, and you know exactly who I'm talking about, are constantly begging to go to jail. So congratulations. You are now on the sheriff's hit list. And as such, if you can't obey the law, you will very soon find yourself living at a different address, the Brevard County Jail. Now, folks, this is Commander Woolsey. He is our North Precinct commander, and he's going to be our point person on this project. And that's exactly what this is, a pet project that is targeting those that commit crimes at this address. I can assure you, that Commander Woolsey and his team would like nothing better than to put bad people in jail that are at this residence causing problems for their neighbors. So starting right now, the house you see behind me at 4295 Delaspine Road in Port St. John, Florida is on his hit list as well, as we are sick and tired of you causing your neighbors to live in constant fear for themselves and their children. Yesterday we talked to you about a house over um, in Port St. John that was a nuisance house. Today I'm gonna walk one of them into our jail uh, they had plenty of warning. This individual not only didn't listen to the warning, but immediately after we left, went and broke into somebody's house. So we're going to, we're going to, I told you yesterday, I'm going to give them a new address, a new place to live so they can't aggravate the neighbors. This is what we're doing right now. If you're going to break the law in Brevard County, you better find someplace else to do it. All right, so what do you think of Sheriff Ivy, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee? What do you think of the Vinny, sheriff down in Brevard County? Vinny, I, I like this guy. I mean, if, if you're running against him in the next sheriff election or you're planning on running, you might as well just drop out of the race. He, he just won the election with that video right there. You know, uh, I did a little reading about him, and this guy has a long track record of supporting victims' rights. He's a victim's advocate, so there's no pretense to what you see in that video. He genuinely cares about the community he serves, and he's probably sick and tired of putting these guys in jail and they get right out. I think he probably needs more support uh, from the judges who are serving in that area because for him to have to resort to this video, that means it's a revolving door. 100 times in, in uh, what, 12 months at this house? That's like three times a week they're showing up the police are showing up there so i don't know that's ridiculous 20 million views of this video by the way uh sergeant uh your thoughts about sheriff ivy i think he's out of his mind <laughs> listen this guy is unprofessional he's juvenile 
And if he's made 31 arrests, what kind of reports are his officers writing over there that they can't write an arrest report that sticks that would garner 31 arrests and no criminal penalty, no time behind bars? What the heck is really going on? And then he stands out here in this buffoonish manner and broadcasts these people's address. So now all we need is a vigilante who decides to deputize themselves come over there and enact some kind of vengeance because the sheriff doesn't seem to know what he's doing and he can't make it stick. He doesn't have reasonable suspicion, probable cause to make an arrest after they've been there a hundred times. What if someone else comes over there and decides that they want to be the police and do what the sheriff can't? All he needs now is a good attorney who can get him a mansion and a yacht somewhere in Florida. Stupid. L Lieutenant Kerr, um What's fascinating here is uh, I see this with a lot of sheriffs down in Florida are, are very um, accessible to the public and, and very much out there, uh, you know, because sheriffs apparently down there have a lot more jurisdictional power than they do in other parts of the country, and they're making arrests. Right. Well, I'm familiar with uh, many, well, in particular one jurisdiction right now who is so fed up with the the judges in their area that they have decided to not uh, have car chases, period, not to have pursuits no matter what the crime. They are not pursuing people. Uh, uh, they have disbanded their narcotics unit, and it's not this particular agency, but I'm familiar with an agency that has done that, a major agency, much larger than this one, that has disbanded their narcotics unit because they're sick and tired of these individuals being out almost before they can get the report documented that they've completed upon the arresting that individual. So I think it's a matter of this this uh, sheriff being frustrated with the revolving door that's probably going on in his court system in his area. Next story from WXYZ in Detroit, Michigan. A family seeks answers in a homicide case. It's been really rough. Sherry Lynn Justice Moda's mother was brutally murdered during a home invasion in Redford two years ago. Sherry says she was on the phone with her mother when there was a knock at the door moments before she was killed. And then she says, um, I'll call you right back, baby. And I, and I hesitated before I answered her back. But I didn't feel comfortable. And then I'm like, OK, Mom, I love you. I'll talk to you later. And she says, Always, baby. I love you. Um, we kiss each other, and then she hung up the phone. Authorities say she was stabbed, and an autopsy revealed there was evidence of blunt force trauma to her body. Fast forward to today, Redford police say they sent charging documents to Wayne County District Attorney for one of the suspects who was a juvenile at the time of the crime, and due to insufficient evidence, the charges were denied. This is not the first time she was in another home invasion that the brother got shot. And she wasn't really a slap on the wrist then, too. The other suspect in the case, Martez Story Webb, a 25-year-old, was shot by a homeowner during a break-in a month after Kendrick Rutherford's murder. Police say he attempted to escape from an ambulance on I-94 in Detroit and was shot and killed by a Wayne County deputy. I haven't slept for two days. I've been so upset. I don't know what to do. I've been thinking, brainstorming, what can I do? Can I get a hold of uh, the Supreme Court? Can I sue them? Can I make someone pay for this? I need justice because this is not justice to me. Sherry says her mother was her best friend and life has been empty without her. She was just a funny, great, amazing woman. We reached out to Redford Police and a spokesperson said they'll get back to us on Monday. The prosecutor's office says they can't charge a deceased person. Redford PD, though, there's two suspects. They, they, they brought the case on the other suspect. So what do you do when the DA says you didn't find enough evidence? Uh, Sergeant Dorsey? Uh, how does that relationship work out? You know, you bring the charges, you, you show them the evidence, and the DA tells you you don't have enough evidence. Well, it's not uncommon for the district attorney to request additional investigation if they don't feel they have sufficient enough evidence to bring a criminal conviction. Uh, generally, the DA doesn't like to take anything unless they feel like a jury 
will be compelled to find the person guilty. And so then my suggestion is go back and reinvestigate, do whatever it is you need to do sub, uh, additionally so that you can garner that uh, prosecution and, and hopefully a conviction somewhere down the road. Now, I understand that one of them is already deceased. You can't go after him. But for the one that remains alive, if he's a juvie and found guilty, the penalty still may be very minimal. And the family at the end of the day, um, how do you get closure when you lose a loved one? Having someone go to jail for whatever amount of time is never going to fill that void. Lieutenant Colonel, what do you do when the DA says, uh, you know what, you didn't find enough evidence? As Sergeant Dorsey just said, you, you have to go back and try to get more evidence. You, you got to work a little harder. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. You know, you, you work as hard as you can and you give it your best shot, but uh, it doesn't always end well. Uh, like the reporter said, you, you can't charge a, a dead individual or a deceased person, but you can close a case. If you feel that uh, there's enough evidence there that they feel that this person who was deceased from another incident actually committed that crime, they can close the case uh, based on that without charging. At least that would bring some solace to the family in that regard, because you're going to always bump heads against the DA's office uh, unless there's an open and shut type type of situation. Unfortunately, in that area of the country, uh, based on some recent FBI statistics, their solvability rate is only about 15 percent. So if you're only solving or bringing to closure 15 out of 100 cases, it doesn't bode well for your community. I don't know if it's a, it's a problem with the, the police department there or, or with the DA's office. When we come back, Crime Time continues. We'll take a look at a case involving a sex offender, but the sex offender is not the defendant. The sex offender is the victim. Oh. I feel an overwhelming sense of relief he is dead. I lay in bed too many nights wondering whose life he is destroying now. I know now he isn't hurting any more children and their loved ones. Sexual abuse does not just affect the victim. All right, another one of the stories we're covering tonight in our Crime Time segment. We bring in our own experts with lots of experience and insight. Still with us tonight, Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee. Also with us, Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Great to have you both here. Next story coming to us from KMTV in Omaha, Nebraska. A sex offender murdered. Saturday morning, Omaha police respond to a shooting at a home near 43rd and Pinckney. 64-year-old Matteo Condolucci is found dead inside. Condolucci is a registered sex offender and served a five-year prison sentence for sexually assaulting a child in 2006 in Sarpy County and was also convicted in Florida of a similar crime in 1993. He got probation in that case. 43-year-old James Fairbanks is booked for his murder and is at the Douglas County Jail. Prosecutors believe Fairbanks sent an anonymous email to local media explaining why he allegedly did it. It explains the killer knew about Condolucci's past crimes against children and saw him staring at kids playing near his home. It later says the killer worked with kids for years that have been victimized and couldn't allow Condolucci to do it to anyone else. It also gives details of the alleged murder weapon and crime scene. Fairbanks has been a paraprofessional with Omaha Public Schools for about the last three and a half years. The mother of one of Condolucci's child victims started a Facebook page in 2016 to make people aware of what they say is a predator that moves from state to state preying on single mothers to get his hands on child victims and that he's back on the streets. Now, a number of comments saying that they should free James Fairbanks and help pay for an attorney to defend him. Some have even called him a hero. In a written response, Lisa Smith, the mother of one of Condolucci's child victims, who lives out of state, says, quote, I feel an overwhelming sense of relief he is dead. I lay in bed too many nights wondering whose life he is destroying now. I know now he isn't hurting any more children and their loved ones. Sexual abuse does not just affect the victim. The Omaha Police Department wouldn't comment, saying the investigation is ongoing. The Douglas County Attorney's Office will respond once Fairbanks is formally charged. Some on social media wonder if Fairbanks is convicted, if he'll have to serve more prison time than Condolucci ever did. 
All right, uh, this is a difficult one. Have you ever seen a confession like this, though? He, he writes the letter out explaining everything. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel, let me start with you. I've never personally dealt with anything like this, Vinny, but, you know, you, you get kind of caught in the middle there because no law enforcement officer would ever condone vigilantism, but uh, you, you have to empathize somewhat with Mr. Fairbanks, although he did commit a crime. Uh, this person that he killed uh, was someone who was a very, very bad person who probably was not going to stop what he was doing, apparently. But uh, so it is a, it puts you in a precarious position as, a, as an officer. You have to do your job. You have to make the arrest. But it doesn't mean that you can't feel some way, uh, some form of empathy for the situation. Sergeant, you ever come across one like this? No, personally, I have not. But I... Uh... I have a problem with this uh, gentleman taking the law into his own hands. Listen, he's a horrible individual and he did some awful things, but we can't speak to what's in his head or what he might do. And so what we need to do is look at changing the laws that would allow someone who can't be re rehabilitated, who has a proclivity to uh, molesting and abusing children in the way that he did, lock him up and leave him in jail forever. Because where do we draw the line? If it's okay to kill somebody who molested children and is looking at them, what do we do about someone who rapes women and may be found oogling at a woman? Do we kill him too because, what, I can't sleep at night be on, the, on the off chance that he may rape again, break into a house, steal a Snickers from a grocery store? Where do you draw the line? You don't get to take the law into your own hands. Lieutenant Colonel, how do you think Fairbanks uh, is being treated in jail? Probably well. Uh, you know, uh, that's one of those situations. Uh, unfortunately, in, in jail, there's a different type of society uh, going on behind those walls. And uh, if you hurt a police officer, you're, you're, you're treated well. If you hurt an individual that, uh, that uh, kills or maims children or rapes women, uh, you're not going to be treated well. So uh, Mr. Condolucci would have a rough time in prison, whereas Mr. Fairbanks probably would not. Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee, Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey, always great to have you on the show. Please come back again.